Come on, put those hands together one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. Isn't God faithful? Yes. Amen. Okay, for maybe two or three of y'all. Isn't he faithful? Yes. If you don't know, Amen. You know. <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. Yes, sir. Come on. God is just so faithful. Let us pray. For the eternal God, I thank you. Thank you that you are already here. Father, I thank you that this is a divine appointment. And I take it not lightly that I get to bring your word to your people. Now, God, give us ears to hear what the spirit has to say to the church. That we all leave out of here with uplifted hearts renewed and reformed minds and a completely changed perspective. God, we thank you for what you're getting ready to speak yep. into the spirits of your people. Have thine own way, Holy Spirit. It's either your way or no way, Yahweh. Amen. We thank you. Speak prophetically, speak clearly, allow the words that I speak be articulate, let them be clear, let them be sound, but most of all, let them be potent in Jesus' name. Let the church of God's people say amen. 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 Galatians uh, 5, 22, 23 is where we'll start. And then we're going to jump over to John uh, 15 and 5. I will be uh, using the English Standard Version in both. Kind of picking off from, picking up from where I left off from when I was with you guys. Last time I talked on love concerning the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible reads, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 23, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Can I get the church to say much fruit? Much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. For a little while, I want to speak from the subject, kindness underrated. Kindness underrated. There are two misses of kindness. Those misses are kindness misunderstood and kindness misused. In our world today, we see the two words, be kind, on just about everything, from bumper stickers to campaign ads to flyers. People use them as themes for their business or organizations. And it gives off the connotation simply to say, be nice. But, but, I, but I want to submit to you that as we see these words, be kind, that we really don't take it uh, as seriously as we should because we treat it as some mundane thought or an idea of simply just be nice. Some people use kindness as, or view kindness as a weakness. 
Simply to say that you're too nice. You, why are you so nice? And they view you as weak because you are kind. Uh, but the worst kind of individual, in my opinion, is the one who uses kindness for a personal gain. This individual isn't kind from a place of a pure heart, but this individual is kind because they want something from you. I'm only being nice to you or doing for you because I know that if I do that, there's something you're going to do for me. Or I'm kind because I want you to think I'm something that I'm really not. Kindness is underrated. Kindness is not an idea, nor is it to be deemed as weak. And most importantly, God never intended kindness to be used as a tool for selfish agenda. Kindness redefined. Let's redefine it. Kindness redefined from a divine perspective is meeting real needs in God's way and avoids Cruelty. It avoids cruelty. It, it, it doesn't start mess. It, it usually solves it. It, it avoids cruelty. It, it, it only, its agenda from God's, from a divine perspective, its agenda is purely, watch this, selfless, not selfish. Kindness. Kindness is uprightness, it's gentle, it's, and it functions in excellence, which means it gives on a level that exceeds human understanding. Kindness at its core operates in humility. Kindness is Jesus washing the feet of all 12 disciples. This includes the rugged and backstabbing Judas. This, this kindness is, is, is the woman breaking her jaw of alabaster filled with ointment, which was a, a year's worth of her salary on the feet of your Savior and mine. Kindness is David sending for Mephibosheth, calling him back to the king's table to redeem him for all that he had lost and suffered. Kindness is service to others. Kindness is, is giving and giving and giving without thought of self. Kindness is redemptive. Amen. Kindness, it's been underrated. It is this same kindness that drew you and I to the altar of our heart. Because the Bible even declares in Jeremiah 31 that it's with love and kindness that he draw us. That word draw simply means, it's translated in the Greek, to be pulled out of. What was it that God pulled you out of? That had he not saved you in that moment with his love and kindness, you would still be in a sick rut that you were in. But because of his love and kindness, you are no longer there. You are now here in a better place. You are a better person. Why? Because his loving kindness drew you. It pulled you. It dragged you out of some things. Because kindness is redemptive. Kindness. He says, with his loving kindness have, have I drawn you. It is this kind of divine kindness born out of love, breaking the unforgiving heart and putting the broken soul back, to other, back together again better than before. Oh, I, I think we all can admit, those of us who have, we all should have this same testimony that since we met Jesus, we are better than before. Can I get an amen right there? Since we met Jesus, we are better than before. Why? Because it was his loving kindness that pulled us out of it. It is not meanness that draws people. It is not being conniving or envious that draws people. It is loving kindness that draws them. Because he says with his loving kindness, he has, he has drawn you and I. And it has made us better than before, and it operates in excellence. In both Galatians chapter 5 and John 15, the Greek word for fruit is karpos. 
This word means fruit, deed, action, result, profit, or gain. Listen to this. Figuratively speaking, the fruit in both contexts is everything done in partnership with God, rendering the result of two life streams, the Spirit of the Lord living through ours, yielding fruit that is eternal. I don't want you to miss this part. I'm going to go back a little bit. It is everything done in partnership with God, not apart from God, but it's everything done in partner. In other words, you can't be kind from a divine perspective without his help. <sighs> okay, okay, I got to keep going. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, my favorite scripture. If you know me, you've seen me preach before. I probably said this about 10 times. Here's number 11. It says, he that is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Which means that once you and I have given our lives to Christ, we are now one with him. So to find yourself apart from him is where we find our lives breaking down. Because you were never designed, you and I were never made or even created by God to ever live our lives one moment away from him. Adam, where are you? You are in a place that I never intended you to be. Where did you go? Don't you know that even when you fall and fail and fail and fall, that I am here to be with you, to cover you, to protect you? Watch this, to have my loving kindness draw you out. He says, he says, don't do life without me. Whew. Do life in partnership with me. He, he's not the business partner that's going to backstab you. He, he's not the one that's going to take all your money out the bank. He's, he's not, Shorty, what you think? He's not, he's not, he's not the one. He's not the one that's going to overtake you. No, he's the one that wants to partner with you. Because he says, he that is joined to me is one spirit with me. That's why it says in John 15 and 5, I am, the, I am the vine, you are the branches. Watch this, whoever abides in me and I in him. Stop right there. Whoever abides in me, I highlighted it for you, and I in him. Whoever. No, not the perfect. Not the one who is without flaw. Whoever. But I'm full of mistakes. Whoever. But, but, I keep, but I keep failing over again. Whoever. Somebody say whoever. whoever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, what your degrees are, or what degrees you do not have. He says, whosoever will, come on, just get connected. Just get connected. He says, I am divine. Whoever abides, whoever ab abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Mm. Please understand, this word much doesn't just mean a little bit more. It means overflow. Yeah. A continual stream of it. Yeah. it. Wouldn't you love to check your bank account and every time you spend money, it looks like more pops in there? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Well, this is how it is when you partner with God. Yeah. No, as long as you stay connected, you can never find, you'll never find yourself empty. Why? Because I'm connected to something that never runs out. And as a matter of fact, there's so much of it, I can't help but to give it. Yeah. Please don't miss this because it's, it's a divine kindness. This is not man's kindness. This is not the little bee on a poster with the word kind under, uh, underneath yeah, of it. Yeah. Nice metaphor, looks beautiful, but this isn't the kind of kind I'm talking about. This is not an idea. This is not some type of made up, fabricated thing just to be cute and pretty and prissy. No, this kind of kind breaks down barriers. This kind of kind draws you out of your stuff and brings you to a place of healing. This kind of kind restores, rejuvenates, and this kind of kind puts you back where God wants you to be in his his presence. Yeah. This kind of kind. This kind of kind. He says, apart from me, you can do absolutely nothing. In your own strength, you're going to get tired. In your own strength, you will wear out. 
in your own strength, you will make mistakes. But when you do it in partnership with God, isn't it good to know you don't have to use your strength? You can use his. For greater is he who is within me than he that's in the world. If I tap into the greatness that's the only inside, I don't have to worry about running out of anything because I have ample enough of what I need because of the vine that I'm connected to. And the connection, the connection rather, is vital. The Lord gave me this and I wrote this down. I said, Lord, wow, that sounds like something you wrote in another book, but you gave it to me, so I'm going to tell the people's. He said, watch this, the evidence of your connection lies within the truth of your intentions. I'm going to say that again. I want you to think about what I just said. The evidence of your connection lies within the truth of your intentions. What is your why? And I'm not talking about purpose for life or your job. No, 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 no. Why are you being kind? What is your intention behind it? Hmm. What is your motive? There used to be a commercial, uh, basketball, I forget what kind of commercial it was, but it, the, 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 the running theme was, what's my motivation? I don't know if y'all remember that commercial. It was very old. Okay, I'm dating myself. <laughs> um, but what is your motivation behind what you do? What is your intentions? Why are you being kind? Hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Why are you not being kind? I think that's a better question. Why are you so, ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. I think I'm going to sit right here for a moment. Why are you so mean? Yeah. Why are you so nasty? Why, why are you so vindictive? Why are you so envious? Why are you so jealous? Why? What, what is the reason behind it? Who hurt you so bad when you have to put out all this negative energy? Why can't you be kind? Why aren't you connected to the vine? Why did you choose to be disconnected? Why are you the way you are? Why? Somebody say why. why? Yeah, I want you to be quiet. Think about it. What is your why? You hear that all the time. What is, what is your why? Why can't you forgive? Why can't, ha, why can't you let it go? It's been 10 years, it's time to let it go. It's, it's been too long, it's time to let it go. They've already moved on and you're still holding on. Be kind to yourself and just let it go because he's trying to draw you with his loving kindness. Why would you reject the drawing? Why? Somebody say, why? Mm. I know you're thinking. It's okay. We're going to get happy in a minute. Mm. The fruit that we carry isn't meant to be kept. You will never walk past a tree and find the fruit that grows from it staying there too long. At some point, what is that fruit going to do? It's going to drop. Why? Because the tree that produced the fruit intended for the fruit to be given out. Yep. Mm, I hope you're with me. So when you're connected to the vine and you partner with God, he's saying, I've given you all of this love, all of this kindness, all of this peace, patience, gentleness, self-control. I've given you all these things. Why? So that you can give it away. Yes, sir. Hmm. It's not intended just for you. It's intended to come to you and through you. Uh, Y'all heard me say that before. Why? Because we have this selfish nature that we think that we're supposed to keep everything that God gives us. No. When it comes down to the fruit of the Spirit, you're supposed to give that stuff away. Why? Because there's more coming. I want to speak to somebody right now. There's more coming in your life right now. You've been given and given and given and given and given and given and given. And I'm telling you right now that you have not given for naught. Do not be weary and well-doing because more is coming. Somebody ought to put their hands together right there because more is coming. More is coming. Somebody say more is coming. And I'm sorry if you haven't been given, more is not coming. Because the Bible says the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. And you've been given over and over again. 
And the Lord just told me to tell you, even in this very moment, that more is on its way. He's about to fill your cupboard. He's about to fill your cup. You've been feeling like you've been depleted, depleted of love. He said, more is coming. You feel like you've been depleted of, this, of being kind of your heart and being honest and being having integrity. He says, more is coming. It's about to pay off. This is your season of promotion. It's on its way. It's on its way. Start looking for it. Here's another question the Lord posed to me to ask you. What part of the fruit are you keeping? What, what part of the fruit are you hoarding? Or, or, or you, you refuse to, to release it? Hmm, how can I say this, Father? So, so think about this for a moment. All the things that Jesus has done for us, he's done it as an, as an example to show us what we should do and can do for others. He gave us and he gives us a personal experience with him by giving us his love and kindness, by being patient with us, by, 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 by being peaceable with us. He does that in an intimate way in our secret space so that you can carry that same lesson to someone else without any type of, uh, I'm looking for something back. I I'm doing it because he's done it for me and I feel obligated to do it for you. I don't know if you were listening to the poem in the very beginning of service when we played the poem. He says, he has, a, he has a part in it when he talks about kindness. He says, kindness is when you give a penny and no one's looking, but God's counting how much you've given. See, real kindness, divine kindness, doesn't look for the stage. It likes to be behind the scenes, giving and giving and giving. It, it, wants, to, it wants to see others on the stage. Hmm. It, wants to, it wants to promote goodness in others. It, it, wants to make the, the, you, it wants to make the other person look better. But there's a, a little tension here because one of the questions that God had given me that I thought was so unique, he said, what do you do? And I, I guess I asked the question to him. I said, Lord, what do you do when kindness is hard to give? Because your adversary is making it hard to give. They're mean-hearted. They're mean-spirited. You're just as nice as you can be. And they still treat you wrong. The Lord, the Lord gave me an answer. So if you're taking notes, write it down. If you're not, don't forget it. He said, what you have to do when kindness is hard to give is deepen your connection with me. I said, well, Lord, that's good, and I like the way that sounds, but I need practicality to give to the people. He said, well, write this down. So I did. The first thing you need to do is fast and pray. Now, I know we hear that, and we think, oh, yeah, I know to do that. No, 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 no. You think fasting is a diet. No, it's not. You just wasted God's time. Because you didn't read your word, you didn't, you didn't worship, you didn't do any of those things that really matter. No, real fasting and real prayer. I'm talking about when you set aside time, you turn your plate over and you spend time in your word. You say, Lord, show me, me. I want to be closer to you. He says to deepen your connection with him. One of the things, one of the things he, he showed me, he said this, this is another one, watch this. When you deepen your connection to the vine, there you will find the grace to do in his strength what you could not do in your own. This happens through, through fasting. He says, another thing you can do, he says, ask me, whew, this is a good one, it's going to hurt, but it's going to feel good at the same time. Ask me to clean your heart. Lord, take the stuff out of me that doesn't belong. David said, created me a clean heart. And he says this after he's asking God to take out his enemy. He said, created me a clean heart because 
the heart is deceitfully, or some versions say desperately wicked. Create in me a clean heart, make me better, because the only way I can ascend to the hill of the Lord, Psalms 24, is if I have a clean heart and pure hands. And Lord, I want to be with you, and I don't want to come to you with dirty hands or with a dirty heart. I need you to clean, clean my heart so that I can deepen my connection, so I can stop making life about me. Because that's reality. Reality is you made your life about you and not others. That's why kindness is so hard for so many people because they want it to be about them. God said, no, it's not about them or it's not about you. It's about him. And when you serve others, you're serving him. So I don't see my enemy. I have to see him in whew, my enemy because we all have a call. We all have a purpose. You don't know what makes up that person's story, why they're the way they are. It is your ability to be kind that may break that. He says, ask him to clean your heart. Musicians, you can come up. I'm about to close. Ephesians 2 and 7. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us, or in Jesus Christ, or in Christ Jesus. I thought this was good. Kindness is the hand of grace leading others to the vine, love, one deed at a time. Kindness is the hand of grace leading others to the vine one deed at a time. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about that. Because when you're kind to others, regardless if, you, if, it, if it's your enemy or not, you are exemplifying, watch this, the character of God. And that alone will cause the people that are watching you, because they're watching Please don't be misinformed. They are watching. Oh, that's that Christian. Let me see what they're going to do now. When they see you being kind, they will begin to wonder, what is it about you that makes you you? And you can point them back to the, to the vine, to the love of God, and say, I know what I was, and he drew me out of it. So I don't have the right to come here puffed up and be selfish with the fruit that he's given me. I have to give it away because I want more people to know what I know, to have what I have. There is a treasure in this earthen vessel and I want you to have the same treasure. And so it, it, it hurts me if I hold it. So I have to be kind. I, I have to love you. I, I have to be patient with you. I, I have to have peace with you. I have to be humble. Why? Because I know what I was before he pulled me out, before his loving kindness literally saved my life. Closing scripture. Colossians 3.12, New Living Translation. Oh, this is good. Since God chose you, I can stay there all day. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. He says, I want you to wear this. Yeah. I want you to put it on and never take it off. I want to adorn you with my love and my kindness. I want to adorn you with humility. I want to adorn you with my patience and with my gentleness and with my tender-hearted mercy. He says, put this on and never take it off because it's his mercy that covers the mess. It's, it's his mercy that covers all the evil that was inside of your heart. It was his mercy that, that kept you alive in every hard situation. It was his mercy. He says, put it on. 
on. I want you to wear this. Don't take it off. This is top, this is top shelf stuff. You can't buy this from Macy's. Put this on and all you got to do is stay connected to me. Put this on. Put it on. Put it on. It is the best outfit you can wear. Put it on and walk in it and give it out and keep giving. Keep giving and you won't, you won't get empty. You won't get tired because you're connected with the vine, because you partnered with God. This is the fruit of the Spirit. Kindness was underrated, but now kindness is undefeated. Kindness can now be undefeated and put in a place where it belongs. This is your time. Put it on, wear it proudly, boldly, lovingly. Yeah.